the, uh, an interesting one. How to Delta hedge an options portfolio. A lot of people gaining a lot of deltas in their long and short options trades, Katie, given the fact that the stock market is off uh, 20 to 30%, some single stocks, you know, off 40, 50%, depending on where you're looking. Uh, and if you're long or short options, you're bound to be accumulating deltas. Maybe you can quickly uh, just, uh, we're going to go through a specific example of a short options trade in a second, but maybe you from a broad level, Katie, can talk about uh, setting up an options trade that is delta neutral at the start. And if the market moves one way or the other, which it's bound to do, I don't know if I've ever met anyone who's put on a multi-day options trade where the market stayed exactly where uh, it was when they entered, uh, how, how your deltas change uh, with that options uh, trade that was initially delta neutral. How does that happen exactly? Yeah, perfect. So this was such a powerful thing for me when I was learning how to trade was like, oh, wow, I don't have to choose a direction. So the idea of being delta neutral was really, it spoke to me as a pretty non-decisive uh, person. But as you said, things don't stay that way. It's very rare for things to just grind sideways for the duration of your position. Um, so, you know, as your underlying continues to move, that will dictate whether or not you're picking up long or short delta, which means you then need that underlying to actually move back in a certain direction. So if you're short these options, um, as the market trades lower you, and it the underlying moves towards your put option, you're actually going to pick up some long delta. And then if you're short call options and the market continues to trade higher, you're actually going to pick up some short delta where you want that underlying to kind of return to a more even kill level with where you put it on to begin with. And then the flip of that, if you are buying those options, but that's kind of the short, how you pick up either long or short delta, whether you're long or short the options as your trade progresses through time. Yeah, because that idea is so huge for people, Katie, which is like, I don't have to buy or sell the stock market. Like I, I can be neutral on it and profit from just the fact that I think it's going to stay inside this zone, or I think it's going to move outside of this zone. The problem becomes though, after that idea gets planted and you sell a strangle or you buy a straddle, you do whatever in the marketplace uh, hours into that trade, even minutes, you're going to see that delta on your position go from zero to positive five to negative seven. You know, it, it's going to move around with that market. And that depends on, as Katie said, whether you're buying or selling the options. Well, let's stick to a short options strategy in here, because I think this is particularly interesting to new people to the options market. Uh, you're you're looking at the S and P 500. I don't necessarily know if it's going to go up or down, but I do think for the next let's call it a month, it's going to stay inside this range of. You can see where I planted my little arrows there. Essentially, you know, 360 bucks all the way up to 410. Now, if that market goes higher, Katie, I'm getting shorter as the market goes up. And if it goes down, I'm getting longer that market, which makes sense, right? Because I want it to stay, if I'm selling options, I want it to stay in that range. And so if it moves to the upside, I want it to go down and vice versa. And we all we all accumulate these deltas. And this happens in every single delta neutral uh, trade, whereby you're going to go from zero deltas to long sum to short sum. Um, it's a matter of when you choose to act on that, uh, that uh, you'll see what we're talking about here today, delta hedging. When do you, uh, just as an aside, uh, really quick, before we get into a specific example, when do you tend to act on those deltas that you're accumulating, Katie? Is it a standard like, oh, if I'm long or short more than 10 deltas, I'm going to do something? Is it when the market hits your uh, strike, uh, the call or the put strike, when are you tending to say to yourself, I put this trade on X days ago, and now I'm going to act on it? That's a great question. And I think it really kind of depends on a few things. It definitely does depend on you know how leveraged the product is that I'm trading. Um, it also depends on the velocity of the move quite often too. Like if I'm tested within a day or so of putting on my trade, 
I might, you know, be more or less inclined to do something about it. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a wishy-washy answer. But I would say if we're talking about just like equity options, I'm typically not doing much until I'm, you know, at the money or like just getting breached. But if it's something like a futures options contract, um, I might be a little more aggressive. Yeah, big futures contracts you're going to want to watch. Just in the same way, if you're trading the underlying market, a big futures contract like ES, you're probably going to watch it more than if you were buying or selling some shares of SPY. I, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, with smaller futures and smaller futures options, probably don't have to be as aggressive. Uh, same with uh, something like SPY, you know, an equity option, which is you know, highly levered for sure and can get out of hand. But yeah, I'm not managing this thing, you know, every hour, like every tick up or down, I have to do something. But I think a good course of action is I get tested on the call or put side. That's when I'm probably doing something. In this example, SPY moves up to your call strike here, and you're most likely going to be short about 45 deltas. Your, your short call is now the at the money call. And so that's going to be worth negative 50 deltas and your put all the way down here around 360 is now really far out of the money and it's probably worth you know a couple of deltas uh, and so you're essentially short about 50 deltas first thing you can do and this is probably the most popular way to manage things uh for people out there um is just simply rolling up that put to that new strike and that actually gets you effectively neutral delta once again, Katie, maybe you can speak to, to how that process works. Yeah, exactly. So as he, as Frank was saying, if you are rolling up to the at the money, where um, the at the money is always worth roughly 50 deltas, right? So by having that short 50 delta um, on your call option or whatever, and then you are rolling up that put to the positive 50 delta for the put option, net net, that becomes a zero delta neutral trade. Exactly. So you've hedged out your deltas that you gained that way. Uh, another way that's uh, very popular for you know large banks, institutions, big trader desks is they're constantly buying and selling shares throughout the day. Now keep in mind they have you know a lot of capital and efficient technology and rates to be doing so. So you could just buy the forty five shares and your hedge. It's it's nice because it's firm. It's there. The market goes higher. You still have 45 shares. Whereas in this example, if the market moves all the way back up to 440, my put now is worth less deltas. And I'm short deltas again. Here, the shares stick along with you, but they can be expensive and tedious. A nice middle ground is using futures. And thankfully, you have the new SMES futures in there that are worth about 10 deltas of SPY a shot. They cost uh, less than, I think, a tenth that of spy shares in there, which is really nice. And this is a nice way, Katie, that uh, the market moves up to your call strike. Uh, maybe I take off that put because it's near worthless and I hedge out uh, some of my 50 deltas. Maybe I hedge out only 30 deltas or 40 deltas with three or four long contracts, or you hedge out the whole thing with five contracts. Uh, a nice way to integrate futures for cost effectiveness and a delta hedge that won't go away if the market continues higher. Beautiful. Yeah, like you said, nearly $9,000 for 45 shares of SPY in a margin account right now. And with the SMES, closer to $1,200 for, for three contracts. Yeah, great savings in there. And you can day trade them if you want that hedge on just for a couple hours. You can buy the futures, sell them back out. Uh, really nice. And what I like to do, and I think Katie's the same, is under hedge a little bit. So, you know, maybe I get short 50 deltas. I only buy three contracts because the market is higher. I still think it might come down a little bit. And so, a lot of different ways to delta hedge there, everybody with options, shares, and futures. Hopefully, you enjoyed it and learned something here.